I have this fascination for texture painting and mostly I would prefer to paint it layer by layer and then use this procedural techniques and then create it instead of projecting photographs on it. So what I've got with me is Apple model which I've modeled from zero. I modeled it in Maya then I've exported into Substance Painter and painted layer by layer. Hi, my name is Vishal and I'm a senior trainer in multimedia education. I have a 18 years of industry experience and let's get started with the video. So uh, let's start with the model first. Uh, I want to build the model and keeping the UVs into consideration. I just uh, want to say that the, uh, the texture of the apple generally, f you know, as it goes to the poles, of the both sides they get pinched and uh, to get that result naturally I just wanted to use the default UVs I would like to show what I'm trying to talk so I just create a polygon sphere and then if you check the polygon sphere and then you have the UV arrangements which is pinched at the pole and saw toothed at the pole so what I'm going to do is I'll assign a shader. I press shift T and then use a Lambert shader here. Okay. And in the Lambert shader, I will be assigning a checker and uh, I just keep things a little bit on the gray side, press six on the keyboard and then uh, increase the repeats of this texture to 15 by 15 okay then you should able to see uh, the texture in the middle is bigger and then as it goes to the pole it generally tapers and then pinches down there and it happens on the both sides of the poles i would like to keep this uh, uv editor open and then select the model and you should able to see uh, this is the saw tooth uv arrangement of the polygon sphere and then if i go to the polygon sphere one is none so you don't have any uvs to the model you need to create it from the scratch pinched at the pole you could able to see that's pinched and then you don't see the separation here all this uvs are pinched to one place and then the middle part is okay for me but I just prefer to keep short tooth which is this one okay so I, as I told you for me the UVs are very important for the model what I'm going to build right now so I just wanted to add maybe uh, 24 subdivisions or 28 subdivisions uh, in the height and the axis and uh, I just uh, keep the wireframe on should be able to see the number of subdivisions there so what I'm going to do here is uh, select the vertex okay and um, there's a symmetry I just keep it off and then um, go to the tool settings and uh, go to the soft selection and enable the soft selection you can press B on the keyboard and then you get the soft selection there and then just uh, by holding B and left mouse button just scale it down okay and then you can um, okay I'm just uh, trying to make this more um, I mean the, the fall off from the center to the edge I just wanted to gradually I mean I mean fall there so I just edited this default thing then when I move it you get that nice pinch going on there like that okay so I'm, I'm just pu pulling it center based on the Apple reference 
which I kept with me and then I want to double click here and then keep the uh, normal spline and then scale it okay press R on the keyboard and then you hold this one I mean uh, this one okay uh, when I hold this one and drag you are only scaling X and Z axis simultaneously without affecting the Y of this okay so just drag it like that and and see which one works so I'm going to scale it like that and see if uh, I can generally increase it and then just scale it like that so I will be um, editing this shape like that so I'm going to scale it and then keep editing it until you get the desired uh, shape of the model like that so I'm going to select that vertex again open the tool settings and then keep the interpolation to the spline and add this kind of fall off and then move this point inside like that I'll use the slide edge tool and then slide it just if you feel that lines are too far from each other to make it look more organic I will start pulling this points in and out and uh, make sure that I'm using the soft selection and then keep it more real than uh, radial symmetry okay uh, I don't want to complicate things I just wanted uh, the model to look very simple as possible I'm going to select the corners here like that reduce the um, radius of the soft selection and just pull it like that and you get that nice uh, bumps on the bottom here okay that's good I'm going to move this apple above the grid and uh, I press 6 and you should be able to see I have the UVs ready I have nothing to do with the UVs and uh, the stretch of the UVs which is naturally happening and uh, the taper which is happening is uh, purposefully I'll be taking a cylinder and just put it on the top make sure the subdivisions are 12 and the axis okay again um, I just wanted to uh, model this as uh, easiest way as possible so what I'm going to do is I will choose the rigging and deformer and we have deformers here so I'm going to use this uh, sign deformer not sign sorry flare deformer and then uh, we have the start flare and the end flare I'm using the start flare value reducing it and I want to add some curvature to it if possible you can select the handle and then you can generally move it uh, the way you wanted uh, it to affect okay uh, you have the end flare you can control that too so that should be fine uh, at this level I'm going to delete the history of this model here 
okay i'll just uh, switch off the the color management so that you could able to see a darker version sometimes uh, it is only switched on and off for the better visibility so i'm doing that so let's select that and then add another deformer called the bend deformer so i'm using the curvature and make sure that uh, the curvature what i'm using here for the low bound should be off and then select that handle and then just move it down like that and um, just a slight angle uh, is what i'm expecting here so once that is done i'm going to delete the history of the model alt shift d and uh, i press ctrl 1 to isolate objects and then i will set the pivot point here but uh, the yellow color is because of soft selection so switch off that by pressing b and then move the pivot point there that should be fine and then exit the isolate selection and then um, i'll scale this like that and uh, i will snap it to that place that's good so i got a little stem maybe i can scale it a little bit so that it's a bit visible to you and then here i will apply a bevel double click the edge and then go to the modeling and then use the bevel tool uh, reducing the bevel segment of a fraction and adding one segment and that gives that nice roundness that gives a highlight and then select this particular vertex and apply chamfer vertex tool okay and that will um, convert the vertex into a face and then i will change the component uh, it's not showing the direction in component uh, i'll just choose to normal not working object okay i thought the move tool angle will be in the direction of the face it's not showing then you can maybe use the uh, transform component tool and then just you move it like that okay and then apply extrude again and then move it with the transform component tool and then extrude and then merge faces to the center use the co uh, transform component and then you get that nice bevel and uh, to make it look more organic i can select that points okay and then move it like that and then it should look more on uh, non radial and then something like that okay i select this uh, model and the bottom i delete the faces i don't want them so select that uh, vertex and uh, go to the select menu convert selection to faces and delete that faces there I delete the history and then quickly do the uv unwrapping of this particular uh, model so go to uv editor you have this uvs okay and um, i'm going to select this particular uvs there so just drag all the uvs and then apply unfold by holding shift and uh, yeah, you can generally use this uh, menu here and then find unfold or you can use shift right click and then use unfold here okay i will use uh, unfold 3d option and then just hit unfold okay whenever you're doing unfold it's very important to uh, freeze the transformation um, and delete the history 
and then unfold it will give you right results okay that's very important and I'm going to scale that and then again apply unfold there you go okay uh, let me bring this both UVs in one place you could able to see um, one um, I mean the, the total apple is covered in the um, space I need to do certain fixes here okay one is uh, where the, the default sphere whose UVs are touching the boundaries will give a problem in uh, in the substance painter so I just try to slightly scale it okay just a uh, one point inside and then bring that into the next uh, UDIM which is here okay but uh, to keep the quality consistent one thing I need to do is I need to keep the checkers of same size if not there could be a quality issue okay so I'm going to select that and then scale it down okay that gives the checkers almost same size whenever you're doing a property or anything and it has got multiple objects you should prefer to keep the checkers in same size that is very important while you're doing a multi-object model for UVs and especially the UDIMs okay that's very important so once the model is ready okay uh, it's a multi UDIM object I can say um, uh, in that matter I can uh, combine this model also if needed I can combine them so for safety I'm going to duplicate this hide the first objects control H and then uh, com combine this object and delete history so this is now one object okay and um, and you should able to see the UVs like that okay now I need to export this model okay so go to file export selection and uh, I'm going to export this in FBX format and uh, it's exported in the scenes folder again Apple FBX zero one go to the file new and then choose the FBX2 model a 4k texture and say ok discard so I've got a smooth model to work with Uh, I will select a fill layer okay so click that button that adds a fill layer here and then what you need to do is you can see here we have uh, all the material elements I mean color height rough metal normal so I'm going to switch off all of them and I'm going to delete this layer which was there earlier and then start picking some color there like that okay so anytime you can go to uh, mode and then switch to rendering then you get the result rendered here again you can switch back to the painting as per the requirement you have and uh, you can go to this window called display settings and you can click uh, the desired map you want to I mean HDR 
which is going to lit your scene so you can choose that map as uh, it gives you a different results altogether and then hold shift uh, right mouse and then change the light direction as you wanted and you can switch to rendering and then you check the render here okay so that's good so i've added the first layer uh, for the apple you might be worrying why apple is yellow no apple has got different colors in it and this is one of the color you have on top of it now uh, i'll add one more uh, fill which is going to be again i'm not going to paint all that information i just wanted only color to be painted so select that and then i'm going to choose slightly orange color which is on top of it okay now you should be able to see the difference between these two colors here okay now what i'm going to do is i will add a black mask okay and then i use the brushes okay you have a lot of brushes here you can use any uh, soft brush like that and then i uh, use this uh, brackets to increase the brush size and then you can come down make sure that you have selected the mask you have white and black color so if i select the white uh, you get that layer which you are painting you can enable base color so that you can able to see what i am trying to paint there okay to make it look more organic you can always add a texture here okay so you can choose any texture from this menu uh, i just want that soft uh, blobs not a hard design so okay uh what i'm going to do is i select the fill layer and add a fill okay so select the mask layer and add a fill okay in this fill i'm going to add the clouds okay now i should be able to see that result then you you can start playing with the balance and contrast and then you should able to see that nice variation in these two colors okay you can choose back to material and uh, you should get this unevenness which is on top of it and don't use that roughness all that stuff just use um, the color and then choose the color there okay so i've got this layer again choose a black mask or um a white mask okay let me try a white mask here and uh, add a fill and then put a texture again okay so i'm i'm using the soft clouds only again clouds too okay here you can play with the uh, offset that gives a different position you can put a scale value of maybe 0.3 and you get uh, another layer of 
orange yellows and all that stuff okay now one problem i'm getting here which is basically the seam line and uh, seam line is uh, one big problem with the procedural textures so what you need to do is you need to start fixing that so if you go here to the clouds we have uh, the texture filled based on UVs so change it to triplanar okay let me hide the orange layer and uh, I'll just choose it to triplanar projection and then enable this one and then select the clouds and then you should be able to see the seam I'll fix it with the triplanar projection and uh, you should be able to see that uh, seam has gone okay so it projects from three different planes and uh, uh, it, it generally doesn't work with the uh, uh, normal method which is uh, your paint um, UV and UV related okay it's not considering UVs it's just projecting on the model now let's create another fill layer okay again I don't want all that stuff to be painted which is color and uh, I need only color not I don't want them the other attributes here and then go to the color and then choose a nice dark red like that okay now use the same method add a mask and then add a fill and then choose the texture so uh, this time I'm going to choose a different texture so which has some character of um, lines okay so we have this uh, direction noise one two three and four directional scratches okay so let me try using the directional noise one and you should be able to see this direction and I'm going to use a rotation of 90 degrees and I should be able to see that direction going on the top okay so you can uh, switch off this lock option where you get individual scale value for U and V directions but before going into that let me put the scale value to 0 0.3 and again uh, use a triplanar projection it's not working triplanar because it's giving that planes let me choose a spherical projection that's working and then um, zero point five one two okay that that's bringing up nice back this to painting mode uh, now I will add a fill layer and then switch off all that layers and then bring this down okay and uh, let me choose this to nice dark color and it's slightly uh, on the pink side not on the orange side I just wanted that now use the uh, layer mask and then add a fill and then choose the soft clouds again cloud 1 no clouds 2 is what I want to pick okay and then start exploring the color okay so let me try uh, selecting this clouds and then scale this okay point 25 again 
um, triplanar projection I just wanted to place with 0 0.95 value 0 0.99 yeah it's working I can select that layer and try playing with the opacity okay okay uh, so I have this lines okay let me select this layer also and then bring on that uh, yellow uh, so I, I just wanted yellow com coming on top of it like that I'm playing with this contrast value so that the character of this uh, lines is more clear and prominent. This looks too strong so I select uh, this layer and then the stretch is too much so I'll put a value of 1 and 1 1.5 0.8 1.2 It takes time, don't worry. 0.7 1 0.6 okay you have this nice option called invert you can try inverting them so you get uh, a better result okay I just uh, select the paint layers okay and uh, paint it black just randomize things <coughs> I'm just trying a different noise that's uh, the problem of the noise actually
okay as you could see uh, i'm adding more uh, elements into it it's really working well i will uh, also uh, take a new layer which is going to be a paint layer on top of it so it's only a color and then let's pick some 0 0.98 hue and then slightly dark one i just need to see uh, the color variation later then start exploring some brushes here okay if you don't have uh, any brushes you should be able to create some brushes I'm just checking the stroke opacity and uh, make sure that I have the paint in hand. Okay, so zero point nine eight and then some dark clear okay uh, if I take a paint layer this is a problem most of the times I don't get the correct result so I will stay away from it I instead I will take a fill layer and then switch off all that roughness metal thing and then After getting that, go for a black mask and then there you paint, okay? So choose this brush. Start adding this stroke. Uh, there is a 2 percent angle jitter I just want to switch off I don't get uh, this kind of uh, patches with uh, procedural textures so that's the reason I'm painting them. The angle is very important. Take time and then paint it. Add a filter and I preferably use this blur filter. And uh, you can select that layer and then reduce the opacity of this layer, okay? And uh, 
add a paint layer on top and then choose a soft brush and uh, remove this in this area okay and the strokes uh, which didn't turn out well that also can be removed When we add uh, uh, specularities and bumps, still the model will pop up. I'll add a new layer uh, it will have uh, the bump also okay the height so the color should be something like that and the bump should be slightly like 0 0.01 or maybe 0 0.025 I can reduce the bump values later so just explore some brush uh, I'll just go for a black mask and then add a paint layer for that and then select the brush and add this spots You can select a normal soft brush, okay. Reduce the size and start placing this one. Uh, if you want to uh, throw that spots on it, then you can always use position jitter fullest and then flow jitter and then increase the spacing still it's way far can I take this higher the thousand is the highest and I just start putting the spots on the app So I'm selecting the uh, paint layer and then um, I just wanted to remove all that from the side okay 
so you can choose uh, any brush which can fix that corners okay something like that okay and just get rid of this on the sides And then just uh, paint on the stem here like that and uh, you can select the paint brush okay and then start exploring some colors there I'm increasing the opacity and then slightly reducing the brush size and then start painting to add more character to it just keep changing the colors of uh, that uh, stem and that adds that you know randomness so again we can go back to the 3d and then check how this stem is turning into like that you can add more uh, details to the whole thing and keep exploring that uh, space okay I'll increase the opacity so I can just do it quickly just wanted it to be more dark in the center okay like that and uh, as far as the glossiness is concerned so I just uh, wanted to take a new layer and then keep this okay uh, let's put the roughness and then make it more glossy okay so you should be able to see that looks nice shiny okay what you can do is uh, you can put a layer mask okay for this and then go to a fill layer and then st start searching for something uh, like this and then it adds that shine variation on the apple the fingerprints and all um, for time being you can select this color and then change it to black okay it's not showing up just a minute Just you should see that nice variation on the fingerprints you hear. Okay, so if I just uh, put this 
at this view and see what we will get okay, I just wanted that area to be more rough so I can select the layer put on the top okay and then if you see the roughness of that layer okay so it's glossy and I'm making rough so that looks more a dry area comparatively so okay 